Herzlich willkommen am 38. DocFest München. A very warm welcome to the 38th DocFest Munich. My name is Daniel Lang. I'm a filmmaker. Um, I also work here at the, at the HFF and I'm very, very happy to present the um, world premiere of Demon Mineral by Hadley Austin, who's also here um, in its original version with English subtitles um, as part of the Doc International main competition. Um, the film is also a part of the Doc Edit Award um, presented by Adobe. Um, and the jury of the Doc Edit Award is also present. So welcome to the, uh, to the cinema. Um, the film is also nominated for the Kino Kino Audience Award presented by um, BR and Dreisat. And if you want to give the film your vote, you can um, put a little ticket into the plexiglass box after the screening. Um, please welcome uh, the director of the film, Hadley Austin. And hopefully we'll also have uh, the editor, Timothy Frey, with us. Tim, can you see us or can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Perfect. And we can see you. You're like huge on the, on the, on the screen. <laughs> Um, hi from LA. What time is it? Uh, in um, it's, it's, it's about 10 30 in the morning. That's okay. That's yeah. okay. Um, Hadley, just the, basically the, the, a simple question. Um, why did you make this film? Why did you have the idea on um, what made you, uh, basically spend at least a few years of your life with this film? Um, well, I'm I'm from like it's not my ancestral home, um, but I am from where the film was made. the The cool footage of the band that's like out in the painted desert and um, where the the young woman was throwing rocks. Uh, I lived there, um, and I worked on this issue for for twenty plus years. This is just sort of the current phase of that work, um, and it's never ending work, right? Like people will carry it on after me. Um, and, uh, a few years ago, I don't know if, I don't know how it registered over here, but, um, there was a lot of attention paid to, um, a protest movement in a place called Standing Rock, um, in North Dakota. And, um, the whole country was looking at this water that was under threat of potential damage with a pipeline. Um, and they were, they were watching the situation with grave concern, and I was moved. I was, I was pleased at this attention, but I was thinking like, I mean, I lived in a place where people haven't been able to drink the water for generations. <laughs> so, um, you know, I also was thinking about, um, how few people know about that and, um, how strange that is. Um, but then lastly, it's a, it's a beautiful place. Um, and I miss it. And it was, um, a nice excuse to go home. <laughs> Um, Tim, you came on board, I think, uh, through the, one of the producers uh, to the project. Um, um, it's a very multi-layered film. Uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about um, how you sort of basically started work on the film. How did you like? How did you build it, basically, or wo how did you weave it? Maybe better. Yeah. Thanks for that question. Yeah, and and thanks for hosting the film. Um, I wish I could be there to watch more films with you all and talk more. Um, and also, I just want to say thank you for to the festival and the jury for um, creating this award to talk about editing. Um, I just think it's so important to talk about editing. And I mean, I've been I've been editing for seven or eight years, and I feel like I'm just starting to learn what editing is. And um, I just think any chance to talk about it including among editors is just so helpful to the form. So um, yeah, thanks for this opportunity, but um, yeah, I mean, just, just, I'm just thinking about concretely your question. Um, so when I came on, uh, Hadley had already done three production trips out there and had a bunch of footage and had just started, you know, playing with putting it together. And um, I came on and um, we sort of gathered our archival materials, um, created a sample. You know, this is, it's always on films like this, this is this process of 
trying to raise money while you do it in order to fund it and further phases. So we made a sample, um, raised some money and then just started all along that just started iterating this process of putting these pieces together. And I think, I guess the one thing I wanted to say about that was that, um, what was interesting to me about this film was these these disparate elements you know we had this like verite scenes we had archival material um we had all these all these documents from academia and from congress we had um this idea of doing cgi and had this narration and um some of the yeah this this poetic narration that hadley was working with um and so to me, that was really interesting. I, I, there, there's a trend of, I think, documentaries that I'm really interested in that do this thing that's kind of like a collage of all these different voices and these different um, points of view on a topic. Um, and so, so rather than like streamlining or homogenizing that, it's like letting these voices and these tones and these atmospheres and these like different addresses all coexist Um so um yeah we just started playing with that together um um so i don't know i don't know if that answers your question you remember like can you remember working on the material the like the, the hollywood material and then mm. the, i will put the, the the music of the metal band basically underneath that because i think it really works amazingly well um yeah you like can you remember how you how you came to that like the process basically well, um, you know, th this this film, there was so much um, resequencing and playing with every possible configuration and arrangement of things. So I think um, that, I mean, I do believe that good editing comes out of play and having the opportunity to play and the opportunity to like put things next to each other and see how they transform each other. And um, that was definitely one of those juxtapositions that arose out of out of you know trying some different things and, and there was a certain energy that happened um with that with that move of kind of like scoring um first making that montage and then combining with the music um so yeah uh it it was uh it, i think we yeah we felt like it worked when we put it together <laughs> i don't know what to say beyond that um does anyone at the jury have any questions? Well then, <laughs> at least at least two. <laughs> Hi, my name is Barbara, and I really enjoyed the movie. But we are talking about the editing, and I was really uh, blown away by the editing. I have to say, with all these playful ideas you had, and mm. uh, and uh, also with the. Uh, yeah, that they worked because I know a lot of movies where people play, but they not necessarily work for me. Mm. And it's it, it has deepness in its playfulness. Mm. And, uh, it's it's not just funny or um, extreme or interesting or something. It does something with my mind. And uh, what I enjoyed a lot was also the pictures, but also the black and white. Uh, decision uh, and I would like to know if this was already made by filming yeah okay the um the and our cinematographer our DOP is actually in the very back there hi Yoni so Yoni Goldstein right at the back <laughs> maybe a round of applause for his beautiful camera work <laughs> yeah much deserved um but the black and white you you saw was infrared black and white mm -hmm. um and it was done both to show invisible danger invisible threat and you literally can see it sometimes like you, you know some of the footage you can see like radon gas coming out it looks a lot of people think it's heat waves um so it was a way to to sort of address that um but it was also paying homage to and kind of going back to your other question um to the images that first immortalized this space um in cinema right those black and white john wayne um films yeah okay but um also the decision um of uh the um 
the pace of the movie. I what I found really remarkable that you uh, let everything breathe so well and um, uh, and give the viewer the time to to really think. And I think that's the remarkable thing about that from my own uh, experience is uh, because as all editors. Uh, we watch the same movie all over again and again and again and we know all these images already and we tend to like <laughs> <laughs> you know because it doesn't it doesn't do so much for us anymore so uh you, you know what i mean or that maybe you can ex tell it in english again so the other audience here understands what i'm talking about um but uh, um how do you how do you proceed in that uh what keeps you away from editing it shorter i would like to know hmm. well well th thank you for thank you for those kind words and also the uh, that's i think that's such a good question and something i think about all the time as an editor uh because you know like out here in la i work on a lot of different kinds of projects and there's different different degrees of time pressure and and financial pressure and um just like different styles of production and some of them definitely don't give you this kind of gift or this luxury to even for example to be able to just sit with and sit with material um all the way through before you even start editing you know that that's kind of seems like a luxury these days on a lot of productions and so it does feel like you know, it's like a gift to be able for me to be able to work on a project like this, where there is that sense of um, openness and exploration and just letting things take the time that they need to take. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, the, the other thought that's coming up in my mind as you, as you talked about that was just how a lot of what we were trying to do on this film is about like, letting the letting the actuality of the the space and um Navajo Nation and the desert and um and the tone and the the way the way people talk and the character of all the participants kind of bleed through and sort of not try to like shoehorn it or um or edit it too hard or tweak it in this way um and, and sort of to let it be slow, I guess. And I mean, part of that for me is, is also just like the, the environment. And, um, since I've been in Southern California, I've, I was, I, I spend a lot of time in the desert, um, just on my own and solitary. It's kind of like a, a space of solitude and silence for me. And, um, I know Hadley's like obviously very familiar with that environment as well. And there's something about the desert that I think, um, there's just something dynamic about that solitude and that space. And so I think when I saw all this footage from that was shot in the desert with this care and this patience, it definitely just made me want to um, let that be and, and appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And, and um, I mean, just to add a layer too, I mean, I think another thing we were thinking about is like, how do you, how do you make somebody love a place they've never been to? Uh, and I think in in many ways, the answer is to let them experience it, um, which, you know, we, we really work to, to try and do. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for this very great and interesting film. And uh, I think you already s said a lot about, and you and Barbara, about the process of uh, the montage process and uh, explains a lot or right? it yeah it has to be like this for me to get to this point of film and it probably took uh many many weeks months <laughs> to do this process or to get to this point of film and uh, i have just uh, uh one question or i, I was uh, thinking about one special uh, part of the film uh like when when you did have these drone shots of the desert with the sound, uh, how did you come to this idea, or what was uh, 
background. Good. Why did you do that? I, I didn't, yeah, I just wondered a bit. And uh, yeah, maybe you can explain this special part. <laughs> sure. I mean, I think, um, uh, Tim, I'll explain why we got yeah. that. You should, because uh, he, he modified that footage to make it have um, some of the effect that it, that it had. Um, but that drone footage was over, uh, it, we were trespassing with that drone. Um, we didn't trespass at all for this film except for on mining land. Um, that, that drone was flying over the Church Rock mine site and was flying over the retaining ponds. Um, and we had our sound technician, um, Orlando Skidmore, fly, fly it over that for us, which he generously agreed to do, it was his drone. Um, and then uh, we had to modify that footage to make it um, mimic the infrared black and white, which Tim did a lot of, and then obviously our colorist did some of too. And then, um, and then Tim, you know, um, edited it in that way that makes you feel like it's both beautiful and also like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> um, yeah, I'll let, yeah, I'll pass it over to you, Tim. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that uh, so many of the things we were trying to visualize here were, yeah, so were huge or vast or underground or invisible or behind a, you know, behind a uh, fence like this. And so, um, yeah, th these moments felt special to me when you could like see some of it or step back um, and see behind the fence. And um, yeah, I don't know, but uh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I, th I think I think you said it, Hadley. I think that that, uh, yeah, that was kind of our intention. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Sven. Thank you for the great movie. Congratulations for your world premiere to have it here to share the movie with us. And I really enjoyed it. It's a good example for a documentary to explain something about the topic, having great characters in front of camera and this. Uh, yeah, it's changing all the time, your movie, and uh, this was really great to see. And uh, um, yeah, uh, one question is uh, about your collaboration in the editing room. I've seen there was another name on the uh, credits, or uh, not just you. So maybe you can say something about this. Who was working with you together? You know, yeah, um, yeah uh, the, I mean, Tim and I worked on this for, for two years, and then um, near the end, um, we we asked Nina of many are if she might um, view it and give us her feedback and and consult with us with us as we neared the end um, so that we could feel confident <laughs> our, um, yeah but um, yeah how was, uh, Tim how was the process of working like you I think you you worked during the pandemic most probably so were you in the same uh, space were you in the same city. Yeah, a lot of um, a lot of phone calls, a lot of Zoom, and remote work has has kind of become nor the norm, at least in my world, since the pandemic. Um, yeah, I mean, one one other inch I thought interesting part of this process was that you know s sometimes you have j just the idea that we could start filming and I mean start editing and working with this material and then. Um, Hadley and Yoni could go back and shoot more things and we could sort of identify where the gaps were and um, they could go back. Um, so it, it does, it does feel like this, the, the editing process was very um, like interpolating with the shooting and the editing <clears throat> and Hadley and I were working very closely on, on that whole process, you know, handing it back and forth Um working this, with this narration and um, just playing with, you know, it's, sometimes it's, sometimes the production is very short and very uh, just like a, a container of four months or something at the end of something. This was much more of like a back and forth over several years, um, which, yeah, which I think was uh, really gave us time to, to play with it and work with it. Uh, just another question to this. Uh, what uh, was your original concept of the film? And so maybe you can t t talk about that a little bit. 
probably changed or it of course changed a lot so but what what did you want to do at the beginning or when you had the idea to make this film yeah it's interesting what changed and what didn't i i keep um i keep processing how much it feels like the thing that was in my head um which really is i think i think a testament to to tim and his patience um and his research right like i like i entered this project with over 20 years of of knowledge um and i carried it with me and um and you know i think editors have to do this crazy thing which is like they have to learn <laughs> about the thing and then they have to like learn all the people's names and um yeah and what to do but yeah I, you know my my original concept was not so different interestingly enough although um my original concept had a lot of room in it to be responsive and um and my goal in i guess i had like three goals one was to create as collaborative a space as possible because it takes so many people to make a film and people need room to be successful and um you know and 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 they have such good ideas <laughs> um and then another goal i had was to like hit some key points you know so like whatever whatever else sort of like circulated around those points you know i wanted to make sure that those points were made um and then my you know my final um goal was just that everybody who is in the film because everybody in the film is indigenous is from the community, you know, that they felt that it was something that they could stand by and with and that it could that it could serve them and their work because they are all working, you know, in some way to address this issue. Um, and so in that way, I, I felt like I couldn't be too rigid in 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 adhering to like a like any specific notion. Um, but I think, you know, as somebody who just like is now watching this like tremendously complex project you know in, a, in this way um it's it's amazing and i am i am actually very moved by um how much you know everybody who who was part of it how much it 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 reflects what was interior right because it is so hard to make that exterior it's hard to do it in conversation and it's hard to do it in the work are there any questions from the audience or comments right at the back hi yes thanks for th thanks for the film even even from here it was uh, beautiful to watch it and experience it i wanted to ask um what did, did you did you come to this um to this project first as a researcher or a filmmaker or actually did you have any kind of conflict between these um these two <laughs> positions or yeah um yeah i think uh i i pers i i am a researcher and an artist and for me those things are inextricably linked um and I think, and, 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 and also an activist all the time, right? And I think that the creation of, of art is a joyful expression of protest all the time. <laughs> um, so for me, it was, it was very much um, all mixed together in a cake already. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and can, can I just uh, chime in with that? Um, I was thinking about a, uh... One of the things that I noticed or was interested in when watching this footage was um, like just the process of casting all the participants. Um, I feel like, I don't know what to say, there's something, there's some kind of chemistry between um, Hadley as a researcher and also some of the people she chose to work with who have kind of a similar, have this kind of similar tone or this, this sense of research or investigation and um, so I just feel like, you know, that that casting process kind of really, which is kind of organic in her life, but it also shapes a lot of what the film becomes. Thank you, Tim. Any other questions? Yes. Sir. So, hi, thank you for the movie. And um, 
actually it's it's it was very interesting i heard a lot of nuclear tests in the desert and never really realized okay i heard that john wayne steve mcqueen they all got cancer and um i didn't realize that um it was um this that it had this impact really and the whole story behind it and to see how um yes the whole um the whole story behind it and also see the old pictures and um really well done and at the end there was this billboard um so um there's hope that they will clean up that mess one day or or i mean um how or yes that so you are still waiting or the, the navajo nation is still waiting that they clean up the mines so everything is still just not done of course are there any um yeah so what what do you think will there be a, a solution for that soon <laughs> not soon yeah there there are 527 uranium mines that we know of right now on the Navajo Nation. Six have been addressed with any remediation. Um, I, at this rate, it will take 2,000 years. Um, but um, one of the things actually related to editing and the, and the answer to that question too is, um, you know, some of the archive, you know, like all of us worked as archivists for this film. Um, and and there are two other films that we pulled from specifically that are about this issue um, that are that are, you know, in the film. One is Broken Rainbow and one is called Four Corners. And, um, you know, they are this film's predecessors. Right. Um, and and th there will be other films about it. Right. Because the issue will outlast us. But um, we're all part of it. <laughs> Yoni was saying the other day, like, well, we're all part of it now. <laughs> and so are you. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah. I'm afraid uh, our time is up here. Tim, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Tim. Thanks. Uh, Adley, thank you very, very much for presenting your film. Thank you to the jury and thank you uh, to the audience. Yeah.